Okay, guys, so today is August, um, let me think about this, August 11th of 2024, and we, um, we went to church this morning. We actually tried, or not tried, we went back to, um, where we originally started going to church, um, when we first got here, um, up here, well, it's like 30 minutes north of our house, and um, it's more like 30 minutes northeast. We went to went back to that church, the one that I have done some videos at. They, it's like on a ranch. It's this beautiful, beautiful setting, and um, we went there this morning. And now we are at we're at a grocery store called Heb. And um, Heb is kind of like, maybe like a Safeway, but not really. I think it's more like a Whole Foods store, but a very large Whole Foods. Um, it's, yeah, they call it Heb, H-E-B is another name. Well, we were told, we, so we actually drove a half hour to get here. It's in Magnolia, Texas. Um, we were told they have the best barbecue. There's the sign right there. Texas, true Texas barbecue. So like we're gonna the try smoky smell, the smoky smells so good. So we're gonna try it and then I'll let you know what I think. We're all about barbecue, so we're in the correct state, right? We're in the right state to see. I guess they're just Texas is uh, really well known for their barbecue. Looking forward to it. Oh wow, it's, a, it's kind of like a so it's interesting. So, this barbecue place is inside the grocery store. Isn't that kind of funny? So, here, let me show it to you. There we go. It's called True Texas Barbecue. And um, so, this is inside a grocery store. So, you can get it, see the grocery store back there. Isn't that interesting? So, I will let you know. Um, what I think, there's the menu. Alright, I'm gonna order some food. Alright, so we ordered a, um, I ordered a baked potato because I love, I love baked potatoes. Love, love, love potatoes. And then Hadid, here I'll show it to you. Look at that beast. It's a, their Texas barbecue, or their Texas brisket, and then that is the potato. That's the potato that I ordered. And then, of course, you can't go to a barbecue place and not get, what, for dessert? Banana pudding. So, I'll see what I think of this one. I think Hadid, yeah, he's getting napkins. Alrighty. So, we did it. I should have shown you a picture of... So Hadid did manage to eat it. Um, barely. Barely, true. And I probably had two or three bites of his. Um, and then I eat half of my potatoes, so I have leftovers. Let me see if I can, well, I was gonna try and show you a picture of it, but I'm holding a grocery bag with my right arm, this with this, and then of course the camera, which is my cell phone. I've been so blessed by um, this phone <laughs> and that I haven't broken it or lost it and I just am so grateful for it because I'm able to do so much as you guys know. But I don't want to, I don't want to have it become an idol. That is, I was just talking to Hadid about that, how sometimes I think we don't realize we maybe underestimate what can become an idol to us, including our loved ones. I know I've talked about this before. Even our, um, even spouses and children can become idols. <clears throat> All it takes is for us to put an importance, one second, I'm putting our stuff in the car. All it takes is for us to put something else above God. Thank you, babe. That's one thing I'm not used to, but I love 
is that Hadid opens the door all the time, wherever I'm at. Um, I'm trying to think if it's, well, it's always the car door. There might be less than a handful of times that he hasn't opened the door. Um, and that was just, we are either in a hurry or the way we parked or there's been a couple times where I've told him like, don't, don't, because it's pouring down and raining and there's no sense in you coming to my side of the door, opening the door for me, waiting for me to get in, and then you're getting soaking wet as it's pouring on you. So I'll say, no, don't do it, you don't need to. But it was good, lunch was good. We got a couple things at the grocery store. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. What did we see in there when we sat down and we started to eat? Some young ladies um, grabbed hands and started praying before they started eating. How old do you think they were? <laughs> One of them probably middle school. And then the older one, probably junior high, right? Yeah, she might have been able to drive. Maybe that's there why was they were a, there. Yeah, there was an age gap. Yeah, them. I think two of them were sisters. Maybe all three of them were sisters. Not to tell. <laughs> but they all—it was so sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is our lunch experience. We sit down, and to our right is this long table of a bunch of, I would say, 60 and 70 year olds um, gathered. And I actually kind of thought, oh, I wonder if it's a group of people getting together after church. Um, and I noticed that they were praying together. Um, and I could hear them and then, and their heads were bowed. And I thought, oh, this is beautiful. I love it. Um, but the most unusual thing is when I looked over to my left and I saw these girls, um, like Hedy said, they were, I'm guessing maybe one 16, 15 or 16, one was um, middle school, and then there was a younger one who was probably 10. And they all grabbed hands together, these girls, on their own, no parents sitting near them or even by them. and. The older one, I think, kind of prompted and put out her hand, and they all held hands together, and they prayed over their food. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love being around this. And I know, yes, we're in Texas, the, what they call it the Bible Belt, but it's not necessarily like that everywhere here in Texas. So there's still a lot that they don't you know, talk about Jesus, um, but this was, to me, it was such a blessing, because it is something I pray every single day, is that we will see a new facet of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will see something new and expanded within ourselves, but also around others, so I am believing God answers, He has been answering my prayers, like, if I need to write these down, well, so I put them in my journal, but I need to, but I have a passcode on my journal. I need to, um, I need to write them down. We actually have a book to write them in, and um, it was something your guys' says Auntie Anne had given us for our wedding, and it's this leather, like, journal book thing, so um, I want to... I need to be better about writing it down in the open. Uh-oh, looks like there was a bad accident up here. All right, I'll turn the phone around. So Fire truck. Motorcycle. Oh, motorcycle. Oh no, girl's crying. Oh. I don't know how I had turned my cell phone Father God, Lord.
Lord, we just pray over that young lady who was off to the side. I can tell she was distraught. Maybe she was the one driving the motorcycle. Lord, we just pray over the whole situation, um, and we just lift them up in prayer. We ask that your peace go ahead of them and before them and with them, Lord. And Lord, we pray for anyone who was injured in that accident, Lord, that you'll be with them as well. In your name, amen. <clears throat> that brings up a memory that we used to do that. I don't know if you guys remember warning Clara, but anytime, anytime that we see um, or actually, it was any time that we heard, definitely saw, but any time we heard an ambulance. Why you probably remember this too, because I started this when you were a little boy. And it was just something that I continued, that whenever we heard an ambulance, um, or a siren, I guess not ambulance, but whenever we heard a siren, we would pray. We'd pray for the policemen, the ambulance, the firemen. We would pray against the spirit of fear. Um, we pray for healing in the situation and provision, and for the families who were um, involved in the accident, as well as the extended families. And I love that. And Warren and and Wyatt, Claire, you were the same way. You would be like, "Mom, Mom, there's a siren," <laughs> and I'd be like, "Okay, okay." And then we would stop. And even if we were driving in the car and talking about something we would stop what we were talking about and we would pray we would pray for them pray for the situation and i missed that with you guys still got a reason to pray oh, that's funny that song. that song was playing right now oh yeah the song was still got a reason was that what it is yeah Same. still got a reason to pray or to praise it might be the praise, praise but... Um, once if they've, 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 they've got a green light, let them go. Okay. We are stuck in traffic. We're, we we were supposed to turn left back there, and, but I think I was probably talking and got him distracted. Um. So, anyways, um. What are you guys up to today? What are you guys doing? Are you going to church? Um, Warren, you're driving now. Um, even if your um, bio dad and Jenna aren't um, establishing a church or aren't going to a church, um, I'm assuming you have a vehicle and you can drive and I encourage you to find a good, um, good Bible teaching church, a church that believes in the Trinity, meaning God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. Um, I might even do some research for you. Um, maybe I'll dig around, ask some questions, because I know that um, Moses Lake is heavenly, have, not heavenly, heavily, heavily, um, full of Freemasonic members, but hidden in the churches. I know that for sure. You guys have like a, like a Unitarian kind of church, which is Freemason. Um, they won't talk about it, but, but they are, they're deeply involved. Um, but I also know that Moses Lake is, I, you guys have a huge temple there. Um, it's a Mormon temple, you guys. It is, I'm guessing that town is probably funded by Mormons. And Mormons are connected to the Freemasonic Lodge. Who they're connected to Freemasonry. Um, it's all connected. So, with that being said, it's probably difficult to find a church that talks about all three. The Trinity. Um, there are Moses like so maybe I'll dig around a little bit see what I can come up with um, I know that my friend Becky um, you guys remember Becky um, I believe that before they moved to Bend Oregon they found a church they were attending a church that she liked I think it was more of a four square church but she talked good things about it um, but a church, I do want to say this, 
not everybody has to go to church. Um, church is a place of community, um, but I also believe that the most important thing is your relationship with Jesus Christ, Yeshua. That is the most important thing. And if you have a relationship with Him, and you're in the Word, you're in the Bible. Um, in fact, I always tell people, and you probably remember me talk about it, that you have to become super solid. If you look at a cross, there's a pole that goes down into the ground. That part of the cross has to be solid, and that represents you and God. You and Jesus, Yeshua. You and the Holy Spirit. And once that is super solid, then will you put a cross on my arm? with your right hand then you add the cross part which is the church the body the church building thank you babe and that's what makes um for a really strong unified person for you to be able to give to the body of christ give to the church the building the people in the building and you're able to decipher like are they teaching out of the bible or are they teaching out of their own head knowledge? And that's really important. <clears throat> so, I could see how it might be difficult to find um, a church that you feel like is, you know, teaching from the Bible. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's plenty of wonderful churches there. I don't know. Um, but I, I want you guys to know I pray for you every single day. to fulfill that calling. Thank you, Lord. I continue to pray, Lord. 